What is your name, please? My name is Beverly Marsh. What is your name, please? My name is Beverly Marsh. What is your name, please? My name is Beverly Marsh. Two of these girls are imposters. Only one is the real Beverly Marsh and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of suave hairdressing and conditioner, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Kitty Carlisle. Next, Mr. Don Amici. Then sitting in for Polly, our good friend who's one of the stars of the Thurber Carnival here in New York, Miss Peggy Cass. And finally, Mr. Tom Poston. Now, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it to you. I, Beverly Marsh, am a student at the Taylor School and a member of the school safety patrol. On March 10th, 1960, I was on duty at my patrol station when two boys proceeded to cross the street. At that moment, a speeding truck passed a red light and headed toward the crosswalk. I ran out into the street and pulled the boys back from the path of the oncoming truck. For this act, a patrol life-saving award was personally presented to me last week by Vice President Richard Nixon, signed Beverly Marsh. All right, panel, you heard these three young gigglers, uh, ladies, all, claim, all claiming to be Beverly Marsh safety patrol heroines. And let's start this first round of questioning with Don Amici. Don, please. Uh, thank you, bud. Number three, where is Taylor School? In Augusta, Maine. In Augusta, Maine. Uh, number, uh, uh, number one and number two, you, you both say it's in Augusta, Maine also, do you? No. Oh, you don't? Oh, well, then number... <laughs> <laughs> well, now, if you can, can I get in on this joke? <laughs> Number two, where is, where is Taylor School? Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Cedar Rapids. And uh, uh, what big, uh, what big uh, uh, company is in Cedar Rapids? They manufacture something that children eat. Quaker Oats. Quaker Oats. Number one, where is Taylor School? Red Wing, Minnesota. Pardon me? Red Wing, Minnesota. <laughs> Number, uh, that's that the only time for you around, Don. She giggled you out of your answers. She sure Peggy did. Peggy Cass, please. Uh, number three, the Cetela School is in Augusta, Maine. What's special in Maine about Augusta? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, number uh, one, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, did President Nixon, did Vice President Nixon go there no. to give... Where did you receive the award? I received it in the Capitol Building, Washington, D.C. Did you stay at a hotel when you were in Washington? Yes. Would you please tell me, number two, what that hotel was? The Mayflower. The Mayflower. And uh, number three, um, did you go by train from Augusta, Maine to Was Washington, or did you fly? No, we took the car. <laughs> She's having more fun than anybody. <laughs> Number three, uh, did you, uh, when you rescued both these boys, were they big boys? <laughs> no, they were back in kindergarten and second grade. I skipped first grade. Tom Poston. <laughs> Thank you. Now watch him clam up when I'm on. The kid won't laugh all night. Uh, uh, um, number one. Beverly, number one, do you have any trouble with the boys at these school crossings? No. Number two, can you tell me, do they have bellboys in the Mayflower Hotel? Yes. Do they call them bellboys? Um, I, I don't know. They never called them. <laughs> never that called was them. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Chuckles, number three. What a wonderful laugh. What lovely girls they are. Number three, can you tell me, what's a nickname for your first name? Well, I don't have one. 
Don't have... Didn't bring one with you, eh? <laughs> Number... <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> Number three, what is the color, what is the color of uh, Vice President Nixon's eyes? Well, I think they were blue. I didn't pay Number much two, attention to them. Number two, what color would you say his eyes were? I didn't pay much attention to Number one, did you? Brown. <laughs> uh, who is the governor of Minnesota, number one? Number one. Uh, governor? Yes. You come from Cedar Rapids, Minnesota? No, no, she comes from Cedar Rapids. Oh, uh, where do you come from? Red Wing. Oh, Red Wing what? Minnesota. That's what I said. Who's the governor? Oh, I'm all mixed up. <laughs> okay. That's all. That's all the time we have for giggling. It's time to vote now, if you don't mind. Some serious business without consultation panel. Will you please mark your ballots? And in so doing, vote for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Have you all voted? Yeah. All right. Kitty, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted on the basis of Vice President Nixon's eyes. I think they're brown, and number one said they were brown. So I voted for number one. Okay. Don, your vote, please. Well, I voted for number uh, two, Bud, and I sure wish I had a reason for it. I just, uh, I don't, that's your guess. Peggy? I voted for number two because she knew the Quaker Oaks were made there. And finally, Tom, your vote, please. I voted for number two as well, Bud. I thought she All right, there we have it. Our votes are all in. Our minds are made up. Our giggles have paused for the moment. And let's find out now which one of these young ladies is the real safety patrol heron of her, of her school. So will the real Beverly Marsh please stand up? Thank you very much, young lady. <laughs> Nothing like having your own built-in audience to carry around with, is it? Uh, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really are? My name is Paul Tenzer, and I attend World School, and I'm in the seventh grade. Good girl. <laughs> now, number three, if you can fight your way through your own giggle, would you tell us your real name and where you go to school? <laughs> Uh, I should have a list of your name here somewhere, but I don't have it. What, what is your name? <laughs> is it Claire something? Claire what? <laughs> it's Claire crazy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's have your real name. Claire Ferrieri. I go to, I'm a student at St. Margaret's School. And a very happy one, too. <laughs> All right, young lady. <laughs> now, <laughs> I want to ask the real young lady, our, uh, our real heroine, uh, just how old are you? Twelve. Twelve years old. Well, it's certainly nice to have you with us, and we're mighty proud of you, too. How old are you, Miss Giggles? <laughs> how old are you? Hold up your hands. How old are you? Huh? Nine years old. All right, we got something out of that. <laughs> and in checking our score, we find that there was only one incorrect vote of $250 from Helene Curtis. And, of course, a gift package of fine beauty products for you ladies to use now or later. <laughs> good night to you, good luck, and God bless you. Keep happy. <laughs> now, panel, let's meet our next team of challenges. What? Is your name, please? My name is Harold M. Hoflinger. What is your name, please? My name is Harold M. Hoflinger. What is your name, please? My name is Harold M. Hoflinger. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this next affidavit? I, Harold M. Hoflinger, am an ex-convict. 
I was arrested for bank robbery and served two years of a two to 14 year term in the Indiana State Reformatory. Shortly after my release from prison, I was converted to Christianity. I studied for the ministry and am now an ordained minister. I was also a missionary in Ecuador. Presently, for the first time in the reformatory's 100-year-old history, I am prison evangelist in the same institution where I spent two years as a convict. Signed, the Reverend Harold M. Hoflinger. Three gentlemen this time, panel, each one claiming to be the Reverend Harold M. Hoflinger, prison evangelist. Let's start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Thank Kitty? you, bud. Uh, Reverend Hoflinger, number one, what denomination are you? Baptist. Number two? Baptist. Are you a Baptist, number Baptist. three? Uh, number one, what, are the, what Indians live in Ecuador? The Aucos, the Salsacos, and the Quichuas. And the, number two, what is the capital of Ecuador? Quito. Number three, how do the men react to your having been a convict in the same reform? Do you feel that this is very valuable? It's extremely valuable. It's done it, uh, we do my best work. What's that? I do my best work because I know them, they know me. Yes. Number one, do you feel that uh, out of what proportion of men do you feel are ever rehabilitated in prison? Well, I would say that uh, a, a large percent of them are when they come under the truth of the gospel. Number two. Don? Number two, uh, uh, why did you rob a bank? Needed the money. <laughs> uh, number three, where is the reformatory in Indiana? The reformatory is at uh, La Porte. Number one, uh, w would you agree with that? I didn't hear his answer. What did you say, sir, please? La Porte. La Porte? La Porte. You agree with that number one? Uh, the reformatory, I believe, is at Pendleton, Indiana. Number two, would you say that, uh, uh, would you choose between the two, whether it's Pendleton or Laporte? It's Pendleton. Pendleton. Uh, number uh, uh, two, what is the maximum sentence you can get for bank robbery? Uh, Fourteen years. Fourteen years? Yes. Number three, is there a difference in the maximum between bank robbery and armed bank robbery? Uh, yes, that is a technical difference. I I'm talking about maximum sentence. The maximum sentence. Peggy? Uh, number one, uh, who was Willie Sutton? He's a very famous man. He's now incarcerated, I understand, in New York State, I believe at Attica. Number two, uh, where is the Mato Grosso? I'm sorry. Number three, please. Would you repeat that, please? Would you repeat that, please? Uh, where is the Mato Grosso? My Spanish accent might not be so good. <laughs> I believe that is in the Brazilian rainforest. And number one, please. Well, if my geography uh, stands me right from my days in school, which was longer than your days, I think it's in South America somewhere. Well, uh, Tom. I hope it's not in Ecuador. I'm going to be in big trouble. <laughs> Listen, my kids speak Spanish. She's a little bit of a thing, but she, she speaks Spanish. And I ask her a question today. Number two, could you tell me how to say it's the same thing in Spanish? No, sir. Uh, number one, do you know what, do you happen to know what lining out a song is? I ask you this as an ordained minister. Do you know what lining out a song might be? Oh, down south, that's quite prevalent. Uh, lining out a song is when a man sings or the leader sings and the congregation follows. You wouldn't have to be a minister to know that if you've ever been in the South, Tom. What about the matter Grosso? <laughs> I stand That's on my it. constitutional no more time. right. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say we have no more time, and you have to vote. Mark your ballots now without consultation. So will you kindly do so and select, of course, number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked. Kitty, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one. I think it's number two. I tell you, Polly Seed is catching. I think it's number two, but I, I voted for number one on the basis of the fact that he told me about more Indians in Ecuador than I'd ever heard of in my whole life. 
So I think it's number one. Don, your selection, please. I voted for number one because those Indians that he rattled off sounded very <laughs> authentic to me. My full knowledge of what Indians are in Ecuador. So, uh, you know, again, it's Peggy, good. which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number one because I think it's in South America, too. <laughs> <laughs> and Don, what about your selection? I did, too. I voted for number one as well. I, I like the answers very much about the Indian, and he's perfectly right about lining out a song, mm -hmm. although I wasn't aware that... Uh, uh, non-ministers would be as likely to know as ministers. Okay, there we have it now. Our minds are all made up. Are yours? Let's find out who's right, who's wrong, and how well we did this time as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real prison evangelist. Will the real Reverend Harold M. Hoflinger please stand up. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the other two will have to go right back to jail. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll have to teach them not to lie. Right. right. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Chester L. Mowry. I'm veterinary district sales manager for the Pittman Moore Company. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number three, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Judson K. Mulford. I'm production manager for the American Journal of Nursing Company. Thank you. Mr. Hofinger, I'd like uh, sincerely to congratulate the Christian League of Forgotten Men in Osceola, Indiana, I believe it is, on the wonderful work that you're doing out there. According to the data that I have here, to date over 1,100 ex-inmates have gone through the program of the Christian League and have returned to their rightful places in society. This is a really astounding record. In checking our score, we find that the panel did real well. Truth was there to be seen in this round, and they all saw it for what it was. You can't hide that under a bushel, and they all guessed correctly, so there are no incorrect votes, but that means, in that case, Helene Curtis contributes $150, gentlemen. And, of course, when you weigh out, you'll find a gift package of fine beauty products from Helene Curtis for your ladies. Thank you very much for being with us. Good night. Might I say you. something, bud? We have just very little time, sir. I think this is one of the nicest home type of shows that I have ever seen, and I'm glad to have been on. But I sure thought the panel would do me a better job. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. All right, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Monique Benoit. What is your name, please? My name is Monique Benoit. What is your name, please? My name is Monique Benoit. Once again, panel, will you look at the affidavits, the copies that you have as I read mine? I, Monique Benoit, was born in France, where I was an elementary school teacher. My occupation in this country is of a much different nature. I am a newspaper columnist and an authority on affairs of the heart. I lecture to men's clubs and write a daily column called Entre Nous, in which I advise my readers on problems of love and marriage. Signed, Monique Benoit. Here we have it once again, three charming ladies this time, each one claiming to be Monique Benoit, advice to the lovelorn columnist. May we start this round with... Uh, Tom Poston, huh? Thank you, Bart. Monique. Monique. <laughs> <laughs> Benoit. Tell me, uh, let's see. Number one, uh, if I said, je suis tout nu, what would that mean? You know? <laughs> Don't laugh now. Not a good. <laughs> I can't translate. Uh, number two, Monique, number two. What size type is used in, uh, in printing to, uh, for statistics? Very small type. What's that size called? Pika. Uh, is there another one, even smaller? Oh, the elite. Now, tell me, what is a t number two, what is a tear sheet? This is the sheet they take off. <laughs> and then you're... Hey, Carlisle. <laughs> Uh, number three, where did you teach school in Paris? In, in France. In Paris. In Paris, where? In four different schools. Which one? Elementary schools. What were they called? Well, they are called Ecole Communale. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Number two, where did you teach? I teach in Dijon. Ah, also in the Ecole Communale? Ecole Normale. Ecole Normale, for older people? No, 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 no. For smaller people? The children. Uh -huh. uh, number one, where did you teach? Lycée Denis. Number three, when you're telling people what about love and marriage, what is the most important thing they want to know? Well, they want to know how to get along with their mates. Number two, when you go to talk to men's clubs, what is the most important thing they want to know? Oh, they want to know how they can keep their women from going out with the other gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> ah, down immediately. Number three, how many years do, did you have to study before you got your teacher's certificate? How many years did you have to study before you, you got your teacher's certificate? I didn't get it. Oh, I teach your certificate. Uh, two years. Two years? Yes. How many, number one, how many years are in the uh, elementary schools in France? Oh, I don't know exactly that. I beg your pardon? What do you mean, how many years? How many years do you study in the elementary schools? The boys, they are there. Depends how... You mean... The boys. No, I, I believe but you I mean before you go into what we call high school. Oh. How many years of elementary school oh, are there? Oh, I see. Is that oh, right no. Yes. I don't think so. You have to have a personal, a different education for that. I <laughs> for the elementary school. I beg your pardon? <laughs> no, I think you misunderstood his I question. Do. I'm sorry. <laughs> the I do time understand. Is up I'm too. sorry. Uh, Peggy, please. Uh, number three, what is the street in Paris that goes from um, the Arc de Triomphe to the Place de la Concorde? You mean the Avenue des Champs Elysees? Yes, that's what I meant. Uh, and <laughs> why, is the why is the Etoile called the Etoile? Well, because there are many avenues which are uh, going from the Etoile, and it just looks like an Etoile. Thank you very much. Number two, what province is Dijon in? Côte d'Or. Côte d'Or. And what is it famous for, please? For its wine. Uh -huh. I guess that's it. And uh, we'll have to stop all our Etoiles from uh, questioning any further and ask you to mark your ballots, if you will, please. And vote for number one. Number two, or number three? Everybody set? <laughs> Kitty, which one gets your choice this well, time? Well, it was very difficult, but I voted for number two because when the others were speaking about how many years and so forth, she was looking off in the distance as if she were trying to answer the questions herself. <laughs> Don, your vote. I voted for uh, number three, and I'm, uh, I'm fearful that uh, I... I I just couldn't possibly pin one of these down. I mean, this is, uh, she seemed to know whatever answers I asked, anyway. Wait, you okay. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> you had so many questions, now. I did, didn't I? Uh, Peggy, please. I voted vote. for number three because I always thought Dijon was famous for mustard. <laughs> Dijon mustard, maybe. Tom? I voted for number three. Now, I never thought about that mustard. <laughs> it just goes to show you. But, uh, I thought uh, the tear sheet answer wasn't, uh, too good. It's all right. Okay, okay, there we have it. And you'll find out whether we've done well or bad. And if you're guessing along at home with us, check on yourself now as we discover which one of these ladies is the real advice to the lovelorn columnist. So may I ask the real Monique Benoit to please stand up. Thank you very much, Monique. Thank you so much. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Rita Dimitri. I'm born in Athens, Greece, and I sing in supper class. Thank you. <laughs> and number two, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Madeline Dewey, and I work for the YWCA of the city of New York, and I was born in New York. <laughs> Where did you find that beautiful accent? Oh, <clears throat> my parents were French. Oh, I see. So you come by that imitated mm -hmm. sort naturally. You should be an actress. Don't well, let Miss Benoit get away, bud. Ask her for some advice. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem. <laughs> I have a question for you, though. I'm getting mail all over the lot. What happens to a fiddler's dog? He gets drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, a good, that, a good fiddler doesn't have time to finish his drink. 
because Aye. he's working all the time. Aye. So he takes his drink and puts it down by his chair. And the dog drinks it, is that it? <laughs> and he plays the way, and the dog check. comes over and drinks it, and he gets terribly... Thank upset. you. All my mail is now answered. Thank you very much, Doc. Check here on our scores here now. We find there was only one incorrect vote at $250. But, of course, a gift package of fine Helene Curtis beauty products for each of you. Hope you enjoyed your visit. We certainly enjoyed having you. Good night, and good luck to you. That's all the time we have for tonight, except to say to you, Peggy, that our prophecies came true privately. We knew what a joy it would be to have you, and it was. Thank you. Happiness in the show. You can just about make it if you run over to the theater now. That's all, panel. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bud Collier saying good night from Helene Curtis and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth. The commercial from Bill Dutton. In association with the CBS Television Network. To tell the truth has been brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of Enven Dandruff Treatment Shampoo, Bob Hairdressing and Conditioner, and Helene Curtis Spray Net. Now, this is Burn Bennett saying good night for To Tell the Truth.